Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Kessler from Kessler Insurance, and I am here today on behalf of Cheers for Charity New Hampshire with my dear friend, Joanne. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Lisa. Yes, I'm Joanne Burchuk. I'm with Lighthouse Physical Therapy, and we are excited to have today with us uh, Freddie from I Got Bridged. And uh, Freddie, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your organization, and please share the story of how you got your name. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for having having me uh, today. My name is Freddie, and I'm uh, the founder of I Got Bridged, and we bridge the gap for people in need on the seacoast. And um, how I got my name, I actually, uh, about four years ago, I uh, had lost my sight within a three-month period. I can now see shapes and, uh, and shadows, and I was at the absolute end stage uh, al alcoholism. And uh, I actually had decided to end my life, just drink myself to death, and then, uh, of course, a miracle took place. I actually qualified for a... Uh, uh, clinical trial in Philadelphia, completely out of the blue. And I went to Philadelphia about 15 times in that, that uh, first year and uh, in, in hopes that I would uh, to get my sight back. And as I was going to Philadelphia, I was continuing to go throughout that year. And uh, as that uh, one year uh, threshold came where I would get my sight back, it uh, completely failed on my, uh, on my sight, but it actually saved my life because I got hooked on my uh, program of recovery which was just amazing. And then while I simultaneously was going to Philadelphia, I was also going to blind school at the same time. And uh, when I came out of uh, uh, blind school, I came home and I continued to uh, uh, walk about 15, 20 miles a day because I uh, gained so much weight due to the medication uh, they'd uh, given me. And, uh, and when I was losing that weight, I, I could continue to walk and walk. And that's all I knew how to do at that point in time. And uh, I, I live in uh, downtown Portsmouth, and I was walking throughout uh, uh, Newcastle and, Ra and, and uh, uh, Kittery, and the bridge continued to go up, the Memorial Bridge, and uh, I kept getting stuck. And uh, I had said to a friend, uh, my friend, dear friend Shannon, uh, uh, who was visiting me from Newport, Rhode Island, where I used to live, and I said to her, uh, what do you think about this idea for a nonprofit? Not only is it a physical barrier, but a metaphor for life, how to get to the other side. And uh, uh, I said, I got bridged. And she said, I love it. She said, how are we going to do it? And I said, I have no idea. And uh, that's the truth of the matter. I really didn't have any idea how we were going to do it, but I knew we could do it because what was instilled in me from my mentor, Dennis, was, uh, you know, you need to help others in order to get yourself out of your own self-pity. And uh, I didn't quite get it at first. I was telling him, you know, well, I'm the one that needs the help. And he said, exactly. So by the uh, uh, more people that I was, I was helping, I was continuing to get myself out of my own self-pity and, uh, and it was working. And right after I presented the idea to Shannon, I actually uh, went to the First United Methodist Church, which is near and dear to us. And they uh, actually had made me uh, 5,000 copies in order to uh, shovel for the elderly and people in need because uh, with my site, I knew I could shovel. Like I knew I could find the door and the mailbox and I knew I could uh, shovel, get the driveway and the, and the steps. And uh, so I passed out as many flyers as I could, and then the call started to roll in. And uh, it was just as basic as this, is when I started shoveling with my, uh, my friend Jim, we were shoveling for, for an elderly lady, and all of a sudden it helped uh, myself and Jim way more than it helped the lady we were shoveling for. And that's the exact premise of uh, how I got bridge uh, got started and how it continues to uh, move forward today. And um, it's just amazing that uh, how far it's come right now is uh, two years this past September that it was just a thought on the bridge and it's just it's no pun intended it has snowballed from there and uh, we shovel about uh, right now we have 32 people that we shovel for in the uh, in the winter and it has just progressed from there uh, uh, moving into the first uh, bridgeathon that we had um, and we've had our second one this past uh, September which we raised over twenty thousand dollars with the raffle and the bridgeathon that we had. But with that uh, first one leading uh, up to that, we had thoughts on we need to do something with the money that we were raising. And then it uh, hit me while I was walking on the bridge because it was so difficult to get to the food pantry and transportation is a real issue on the seacoast. So I said, we can buy a 15 passenger van. And then we we're like, yeah, we can call the bridge mobile. And that's how that was born. And it's really <laughs> just a godsend. And uh, we have, uh, uh, excuse me, 16 uh, insured uh, drivers for the bridge mobile. We have well over 100 volunteers and uh, we pick up uh, all the elderly and people in need uh, at public housing all around uh, Portsmouth and the seacoast. And uh, we take them over to gather food pantry every Friday. And then after that, we take them over to the uh, Walmart to get them any items they may have uh, missed at the food pantry. 
And um, like I uh, mentioned, we just I just got back now because uh, we're putting flyers in all the public housing and we're gonna send text blasts and voicemail blasts over the uh, public housing in order to take people over to Common Table at St. John's uh, every Thursday. It's a uh, not only a free lunch every Thursday we're gonna pick them up for, but uh, they wait on you as well. So it really creates uh, some, some uh, uh, great camaraderie and fellowship amongst uh, the community. And we also take people to uh, doctor's appointments and dialysis appointments. And uh, matter of fact, one particular lady is really uh, uh, near and dear to us as well. She lives in Wells. Uh, I got a call from York Hospital. I do a lot of work with York Hospital and we get calls from the social workers quite a bit. And uh, they needed help from the lady needed uh, uh, to get to dial from Wells over to Biddeford for her dialysis appointments. And it was kind of out of the realm of, uh, you know, where we work geographically as far as uh, all of our volunteers uh, going up toward Biddeford at this time, and it was six months ago, and uh, she was just ready to give up on life. She just said, I'm not going to do it anymore. It's getting too difficult. Her rides just vanished. And uh, so we needed to get her Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday over to uh, her dialysis appointments. And all of a sudden, I was uh, sitting there, and Joy and I were going over some uh, projects and things that we uh, needed to do for, for, the, for I Got Bridged. And all of a sudden, we said, well, let's see what we can do. And all of a sudden, we jumped on the phone through the database within a matter of, uh, I think it was probably 20 to 30 minutes. We had a ride to and from uh, to dialysis, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And this has gone on for the past six months. And, uh, and, and we probably had about uh, maybe 20, I think it's 22 people that have pitched in together there. And uh, now the next move is to, you know, hopefully get her into assisted living at, at some point because she's now lost her vision and she can't read the equipment that they have uh, uh, center, but it's really just been a great experience. And, uh, you know, the people that have all pitched in to get her over to dialysis, we've gotten, like I said, way more out of it than, than, than her. And uh, people are getting a real taste of uh, what it's like to volunteer because the whole premise of I Got Bridged is uh, you got dealt a bad hand. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And uh, what we do about it is to help others in order to take us out of our own self-pity. And it's working. It's really working. And, uh, I, I kind of joke around about this and, and I'm at fault too sometimes, but uh, I love when people say, you know, Freddie, that felt so good. I didn't think about myself the whole day, but then shortly after they'll say, I can't wait to not do it again. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I'm at fault with that too, but uh, I was speaking to my spiritual advisor about a year ago and she said, is anything, what's new with you, Freddie? And I said, uh, you know, Nancy, what's new is I feel like I'm getting over that threshold of, you know, that experience of can't wait to not do it again. And I really believe uh, uh, that with the, the uh, constant thought of others, you know, we're able to, uh, you know, dig the well before you're thirsty, so to speak. And, uh, and it's working, you know, and, and uh, I love when volunteers just jump in and, and, you know, even with shoveling, it's just, it's been fantastic. We get a group of people and we're just laughing our butts off doing it during the day and it doesn't even feel like we're doing any work, you know, and in Flatbread, who's a, a wonderful sponsor of ours, uh, they provide all the volunteers with uh, free pizza for the day as well, uh, whoever volunteers, and we have a pizza party over at First United Methodist Church, and uh, it's just been a great experience uh, um, all around and just continues to uh, to grow, and between the, the, the people, you know, works on, obviously, the I don't want to say the ugly part by any means of both the business, but the, the reality of it is, is, you know, raising money to, um, uh, to create the van, you know, we just got off the phone with insurance about, uh, um, you know, an hour, an hour ago and, you know, that type of stuff, the purchasing of the van and the, the, of course, with gas prices. And a lot of times the volunteers will do it for free. And uh, a lot of times uh, we're more than happy to, you know, give them some gas money because they're certainly uh, uh, providing their time, which is all you could ask for. And, uh, you know, and, and Speaking of time, uh, time is the biggest gift that, that we can give to anybody. You know, time is our currency. And I truly believe that. And, uh, um, you know, to help of uh, folks like you to try to get the word out. And uh, I would love for, for people to, even if you want to check us out at igotbridged.com, there's a little uh, tab on there uh, to volunteer. You're not committed. You're just simply in our database. And the one last thing I'd really like to mention, which has uh, really caught fire, is it's called the Time for Joy Fellowship Group which is the first Saturday of every month at uh, First United Methodist Church at 8.30 in the morning. We have uh, our new, newest and latest sponsor, Love Me Lead a Coffee for free, fresh fruit, bacon, egg and cheese, biscuits, and monkey bread. And then we have the inspirational speaker at uh, 9 a.m. And more times than not, it would be like a well-recovered uh, alcoholic speaker. 
in which um, you know people are really getting a lot out of it, both alcoholics and non-alcoholics. Uh, uh, we have about seventy to eighty people that uh, show up, and uh, more than half are you know no, well not normal but non-alcoholics, and they're actually calling me saying, "Freddie, can I get that guy's number?" And, and, and they talk about mending relationships and forming relationships, and you know how to deal with uh, uh, life's lessons and, and what uh, the problems were presented. And it won't always be a, a, a well-recovered alcoholic speaker. Uh, for instance, last month we had Roseanne Stoya, who's a Boston Marathon bomb victim survivor. And, uh, you know, she's not an alcoholic, but she certainly has a, a story of recovery. She was uh, in, due to, uh, you know, the, she has only one leg. She's an amputee and she showed us how she got to the other side. And uh, January 7th, we're really excited about that. Uh, we got locked down uh, uh, the date just uh, January 7th with, uh, I believe his name is Chief Justice uh, uh, Judge Jonathan uh, Broderick, and uh, oh, he's he, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I heard and we, right when I watched his um, watched it on YouTube, and it was just spectacular. So he's an alcoholic, but uh, he was and he's open about it that his son nearly, uh, you know, beat him to death with that electric guitar, and, and uh, he just speaks a tremendous story about uh, uh, mental illness. As you, as you you heard, yeah. So we're excited about that and to get the word on. He says it perfectly. The part I love about, it's so true, even if you can help one person. And um, that's what we have to set out to do. That's how I got Bridget started. We started helping one elderly lady who, who couldn't uh, shovel. And uh, the best part was when she was asking, you know, uh, how much we wanted for, for a, a donation or how much it cost. We said it costs nothing. We're getting, this is what we're getting out of it is the laughter behind it. And uh it's funny, my friends, uh, it's funny now, but not then. Morning, noon, and night, my friend could only talk about his uh, fiance, ex fiance that broke up with him. And, uh, uh, you know, it was, it's funny now, like I said, but back then it was uh, getting like, you know, this again. And all of a sudden, uh, it was beautiful. At the end of the day, he said, Freddie, I didn't think about my fiance once the whole day, you know? <laughs> And it's good. You didn't do it. I didn't have to hear about it the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> but God bless him. You know, now that, uh, uh, you know, helping others, I truly believe, you know, takes us out of our own self-pity and, and, you know, keeps the focus off of, off of ourselves, you know, because uh, I know I was there, you know, I'm so excited. I got to the other side and, uh, you know, I, I was never much, but I was all I ever thought about. That's for sure. You know, and um, no matter what would happen, what was happening in the world, you know, it's like, I would say to myself, you know, what, what, how's this affect me? I was, I was just telling someone today, it's incredible. Uh, I never thought about this before, but I was there on 9-11 on a layover in, in, in Newark when, when the planes hit and I was a stock worker for Morgan Stanley. And um, I, was, so I was in the, the, the Twin Towers for three weeks and I left a week prior to that happening. And, and I was uh, going down to a wedding and all of a sudden, all these, this course of horrific events are going on. And my first thought is, how am I going to get to that wedding? You know, <laughs> I mean, talk about selfish, you know, and, uh, uh, but uh, just, you look back and, and uh, uh, there's, there's no changing, you know, my thought prospect, pr uh, process back then and, and uh, but just moving forward, I have to look back at any of that uh, behavior, behaviors, uh, you know, how, how we can learn from that. And uh, I have learned yeah. a great deal from that. Well, and it certainly sounds that like you have and that you've created such an amazing organization that helps so many people in our uh, community. What are you finding are your, your, your biggest challenges or your biggest wants right now? Are you in need of more volunteers? Is it funding? Yeah, it's um, always you funding. For? You know, you hate to uh, press on funding, but the, the beauty of the funding is that's going to come when thoughts are genuine, they're pure in, in the whole nonprofit is, uh, you know, volunteers always help. And, and uh, we love snow shovelers, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> tend to disappear a little, but funding for sure, you know. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I it's it's wild. About a year ago, after we bought the van, we got it insured. Everything was all set. We we're ready to go to the food pantry, and then there was no heat, so we fixed the uh, the heat in the van. And that was funny. I said to uh, I said to Joy, I said uh, the good news is we've got the van. We're going to keep these people, the elderly people, you know, warm to get over to the food pantry. That's the good news. She said, what's the bad news? I said. Well, we don't have any money left. We have 28 cents left in the bank account. Oh. And uh, uh, I said, well, so we don't have any money. We do have some money, 28 cents. And uh, she I said, what should we do? And she said, uh, pray. I said, pray? I said, that's all you have? 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, uh, but what we prayed for, what we prayed for was uh, not money, but we prayed for God's will because we knew, you know, God will provide. We'll figure out how we'll, we'll how we'll you know get get there. You know, one way or the other, we'll figure this out. And lo and behold, the next day, within 24 hours, the very next day, I opened my mail through FaceTime. I put my phone in the mail and I was going through it with my sister, my sister, Julie. And, and she said, wait, right there, right there. I said, what is it? She said, it looks like a $5,000 check. I couldn't believe it. It was from, it brings chills up my, chills right now thinking of it, you know, it was a, from an anonymous donor, $5,000 saying, we love what you're doing with the community. Keep up the good work. And, uh, it's just been incredible. And uh, um, it's just, we never looked back since. Now, uh, from that point forward, we've never, uh, uh, money has never been an issue. But like I said, we always need funding. But the bank account is, is, is you know, healthy because we're just, we're cognizant in, in, in regards to maintaining uh, donations and, and sponsors. And, uh, but the core group is, the core piece is making sure we're helping others. And speaking of helping others, I got to make sure I don't put that first because I love the acronym for, for joy. Speaking of time for joy, Jesus, others, you. I mean, if I don't put God first, I'm, I'm in trouble. And uh, there was evident of that the first year shoveling. I remember my mother, God bless her. She's been, you know, through thick and thin with me. And she's my biggest fan, our biggest fan. And I remember her calling and I'd be shoveling. I'm like, you know, what are you doing? I'd say, oh, I'm shoveling. I'm helping others. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I got to make sure uh, to put that in order. That's for sure. Well, we so appreciate the work that you're doing in our community. Um, Lisa, what is yeah. you wanna... for, for me, Freddie, too, this listening to the story about how you've come in and just in, in that grassroots effort, right? Finding that one person and helping and then helping the next and then helping the next and just listening to where, where you hear need, right? What the need is brought to you. And then you find a way to, to, to make someone else's life better. It's inspiring. And we are grateful that you're making a difference to our community and our neighbors every day. And um, I'm really grateful that we've connected and got to hear your story. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for the, for the, uh, for the invite, it really uh, uh, means the world to us, and hopefully people can check out the Joy Group uh, the first Saturday of uh, of every month. And uh, we're just we're getting so much out of it. When the, you know, being a joyful giver is key, though. And I let everybody know, and uh, you know, when the, when we have our board meetings tonight, actually the last Wednesday of every month. And the main thing we want to keep in front is, you know, have fun doing it. That's the whole key is is you know having fun doing it. We want to make sure we're being a joyful giver. And someone actually asked me, they said, can you think of any problems you have? And I really had to think, and the only problem I have is going to bed because I, I'm so excited. I don't even want the day to end. I just can't wait to wake up in the morning. And uh, and just to be the ability to try to convey the message of, of helping others in the right manner as far as I didn't find the this magic sauce, but I really just took it and, and ran with it because it, uh, it works for me. It's uh, just keeping it simple, I find is, is uh, best. You know, keeping it simple, keep the thoughts off myself and thank you for the opportunity uh, uh both of you thank you very much for, for all of uh, i got bridge we all thank you and uh um thank you it's john mallet he's been tremendous and in joy and, and jenny and shelly as they've just been they're amazing board members and they're really really hard working board members and i think that's really why uh uh it has really been thriving my family got us uh, started that's for sure but uh, that's been key. The, the board is really, really hands-on and, and really working because a lot of people said to me, good luck with the board, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I see what people mean by that as far as uh, just keeping my, you know, ears open to this certain nonprofits that if some people, you know, may not be pitching in, but that's just not the case here. That's where the board is very cohesive and they're all hands-on and, and Shelly's a fantastic baker if you have a chance to go to the Joy Group. That's awesome. Well, it sounds like you've got a great team. You're doing really good work. Um, the community is better off for all of it. So um, we thank you for that. And we thank you for your time. It's thank been you. a pleasure. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.